Well, our washing is coming along. So far in these, you know, the area that I've washed in, this is ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, and burnt sienna. This is ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, and burnt sienna. This is ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, and burnt sienna. The blackest of the outline is ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. So it's, uh, it's certainly not complicated, is it? It's, it's very basic color so far. And I'm, I'm really most likely just going to work with some uh, increasing my raw umber hair as I, as I finish off the rocks in the foreground. Well, finish them off, paint them in. So even though much of the area that I'm washing in right now is going to catch light, it's starting out pretty dark. And as you can see, you know, it is very simple. There's, there's, there are really not many colors so far in this. And ultimately, uh, I'm likely going to paint it with the knife, so that's going to bring it to life. <clears throat> but at the moment, it's very, well, as you can see, it's, it's just sort of flat and cartoonish which is okay with me. Well, that's a bit too light. Actually, if it's a bit too light, maybe I'll put it in there. I'm still using my nice brush. I want to be pretty accurate while I do this. Well, this is the dark side of the rock, so who am I to argue with that? Might be a little on the light side, but no, nah, it'll it'll work. It'll be fine. more washing in using a combination of uh, ultramarine blue and uh, burnt sienna like in an area like this and then add maybe a bit of white but what I find is that with many brands of burnt sienna as soon as you thin, the, thin it off it tends to become fairly translucent sort of waxy slash oily and ultramarine blue often is very waxy so I wouldn't end up with the coverage that I wanted to get you know it would just be a little bit on the weak side and so lately I've been using more uh, raw umber which is pretty much always quite opaque you can thin it off and get away with it get away with it without, without too many issues really not unless you thin it off too much, but that goes for every color. This is pretty much straight raw umber now with a bit of white. And yes, how do I get a line fairly clean like that over the texture of a canvas? Well, the newness of the brush and you got to figure out just the right viscosity of the paint. You know, with, with what I'm doing now, you don't want it running. Many people wash in and their, their paint drips and it runs. It's fine. That's just a different technique. And 
between different paintings you use different tech you can use different techniques this is just what I'm using right now that's all I haven't uh, given much thought to these distant trees that will be along here. As you can see, I've wiped out the, the charcoal lines because, frankly, the way they sat uh, wasn't quite good enough. I'm going to, if I reintroduce that, that, that uh, row of trees or gentle hillside or whatever it is in the background, that other bank of trees, you know, it gives you the feeling there could almost be water on the other side of this little knoll as well. But uh, if I do that, then I'm going to need to reshape the line that I had in there. But that's fine. I had the line in there just to remind me and just to give me some idea. It's just in charcoal. No big commitment yet. And our sky, I still don't know what I'm going to put up there. I'm leaning towards a grayer sky. But we shall see. Well, I couldn't just leave this long spit of land. I just, it just felt too barren to me. And I decided against putting these bushes all, you know, right. It's, it's just a band across the entire paint. And we've already got a lot of that here. I don't want a second one to reinforce it. Um, but I had a thought and I'm just, I'm gonna, I'll just put it in quickly here. And and say, okay, what if, we're going to do something like that. I could make this bump, I could incorporate it into, you know, distant, some distant hill. Hmm. I'm just going to digest that for a moment. Well, I like, you know, this outlier tree that I put in there as well. It breaks up this horizontal line. <coughs> I think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to go ahead and put in, you know, some sort of an interesting area here, um, distant bush, poking in, I know it's kind of a strange thing to do on a landscape painting like this, but I don't mind strange, that, that doesn't hurt my feelings at all. Once I've washed the, washed the sky in, um, what have you, yeah, see I've already, this is too smooth. It's okay, I'll cut into it when I go around it with gray. Let me just add a hint of white to that. Whoops, that's not a hint of white. That's a pile of white. Sienna and uh, and a bit of yellow ochre just to keep it a little bit green. As I said, I can wipe it out so come in with my sky. You know, drawing the line in is fine, but it really gives you a much better sense of what you've got going on to get rid of the, that white canvas, because this is also white. Kind of nice to tone this down. It gives you a, a feeling of space to division and makes it a little easier to decide whether you like what you just did or you want it gone. Up 
a moment. I like what I just did. Adds a little bit of interest here. I know it's on the edge of the painting, but like I said, it's a little bit of interest. It's not a lot. It's not, it's not competition for anything else. Okay, that has to sit for a minute. <coughs> I think once, um, you know, this is obviously, I, I should have been a little more bumpy there, but I think once I have uh, some sky paint against it, I think we'll be okay. Once I, you know, to reintroduce the bumpiness. There, I'll cut in around there somewhere. Let's make that a little bit different too. Mm, yeah. Just give this brush a little rinse here. And I'm so impatient. I'm so impatient. I'll cut it. I'll cut into it right away. Because I don't know what, what I'm doing with my sky, I'm perfectly happy to, uh, I get the feeling it's going to be a gray sky, okay? So I get the feeling I can just go ahead and outline my shapes with mid-tone gray. That's cobalt blue. Um, no, actually it's mostly ultramarine blue and a bit of raw umber. So I'm halfway on the value scale. Halfway up, halfway down, makes it easy for me to decide where to paint in, paint over it. Raising the values or lowering them a little bit, it's all good. canvas like this in general okay I'm not saying this is guaranteed 100% of the time but in general you see this dropping down and the rest is sky you don't want to start there and go up that becomes a distraction something about the psychology of, of vision that, that uh, it's just a little aid it's a little tip going down works okay not dramatically but you don't want to go up very gently, fine, but again, keep that drama away from the edge of the painting. Well, guys, uh, now I have a bunch of labor to do. <laughs> I'm going to have to go very carefully cutting around my shapes up here. And a type of sky that I really like, and I've done it on several paintings, is, uh, is to start with a darker gray and work my way to a lighter gray as I get to the top. You know, the sky will remain cool and... and this might be quite colorful in here, or warm, I should say. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to slowly work my way towards a lighter gray. Uh, I'm tempted to keep it darker down here, adjacent to where the sunlight will be hitting the, the hill and the rocks. But I'm, I'm thinking I'll probably end up with a design of some sort in, in my sky as well. Uh, so, uh, that's it for the moment. I'll get back to you once I have it washed in. I'll just quickly mention something here. Um, I put in some very quick strokes just to... I do want to design in the, in the painting. I decided not to go from right to left very horizontal. Uh, I didn't think that was going to work. 
So, you know, I like the idea. This is going to be a little bit lighter here. Here, We're just going to wash all this in more or less the same gray as, this, as it is here. Then we're going to hit some light. I don't know how dramatic or intense I'm going to make it. I'm probably going to keep it fairly subdued. And then a little bit of light here too. And then I, and then I want to go up because I want to have this feeling of, of dipping, hooking up with this area where the sunlight's going to be, and then running away again with this and this being quite subdued. You know the idea of opposing lines? Once again, they counteract each other. Um, there's good rhythm there. I think it makes for a good composition. Well, there's our wash in. Um, where I've, you know, some of these lines that I've put in here and here. I don't know if they're going to stay there. It's just a gestural notion of how I would like the sky to behave. That's really all it comes down to. Uh, next thing we're going to do is, I think, take a knife and attack that sky. But that's not for now. See you later.